this is a day's work. So uh, after, this is day two of tearing this tractor down. <coughs> so what I did on day one is I pulled the head and pulled the bell housing cover off and looked at the clutch, which was horrible just like I expected, just like most of them you find. So <coughs> I ended up uh, taking the clutch off and the pressure plate, and here they are. And actually, these aren't as bad as some I've seen, but it's still pretty bad. Pressure plates are ruined, springs are popped out, clutch disc is ruined. So I've got more coming, another clutch and a pressure plate. But the problem that you run into when you, what happens is the mice get in there and they fill it up. And they make a hole in it, they go in through the hole on the front of the bell housing that you check your timing with. And they fill it up and they make a home in it and that mouse urine is pretty caustic stuff. So what you can look in there and you can see that I've kind of cleaned up the flywheel a little bit. I'll still do a little more work to it. Um, it's actually not pitted very bad. It's in actually pretty good shape, all things considered. So for as much for as much junk as I got out of there, I'm pretty happy with the with the way it looks. <clears throat> so what happens is pretty much no matter how the bell how, how the engine's turned, if you get mice, if there's mice in there, you're always going to run into at least one, but normally two of the bolts that hold the pressure plate on are buried in that mouse nest. And they're buried in there very long. What happens is is they is they rot, it rusts everything. And so this is one of the better bell housing bolts. You can see it's still pretty, pretty bad shape, but you can get a wrench on it. Well, I had two of them that looked like this and it's rounded. There's no way to really get a wrench on that. So I've tried a bunch of different things. And uh, this seems to be the first step of my elimination process. If you look at this, it's called a rocket socket. <clears throat> and you can tell it's fluted and tapered as the deeper you go in, the, the narrower the hole gets. And it's, and it's fluted to grab when you try to loosen something. So what I do is I take these rocket sockets and I pound them onto the bolt or the nut. You know, and you can, you've got multiple sizes get the one that fits the tightest and pound it on. And then I hit it with a, with a little half inch, or excuse me, three H drive impact. It works great on these, on these pressure plate bolts. And they just pop, 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 pop and spun out. And if it's, if the size you pound it on spins off, then go down a size. You can get a little set of them like I've got. And they work fantastic. This is not a plug for a rocket socket. This is just a thing that'll save you a little time and you won't have to pull out your welder and try to weld a head on it or any of that stuff. So they seem to work pretty well. <clears throat> so as you can see the surface where the clutch act, clutch disc actually rides is not horrible. If I do end up having to take the flywheel off I will go get it machined but if I don't have to take it off I will uh, Probably just clean it up with the angle grinder and scotch brite pads and it'll be good enough. I just want it to smooth. I'm not working this tractor. It's just going to be a show tractor. So all it's got to do is work. It don't have to work itself to death. So also, the, on the clutch, this is the back of the bell housing, the bell housing cover. And this whole thing was rusted up solid and, and, uh, and stuck. This pivot goes in here is what your throw out bearing rides in it slides up and down in here and then it pivots on these pins well when it fills up with a mouse house you can pretty much guarantee that these these pins are going to be they're going to be rusted too so it's a pretty simple fix you just there's two bolts that go through that go through here and what they do is they there's a round washer or it's actually a round I don't know kind of a round keyway essentially it's like it looks like a washer but it's a big key it goes in the slot on this pin 
and then it slides through here and your bolt goes through it and it locks it all into place. So it's a pretty easy fix. If you can get the bolts out of here, then you can pound those keys out and then you can just drive these out. I think this one came out this way because it's the one, that, or this one came out this way because it had the, you know, the clutch lever on it. You can also take this off, but I didn't need to. And then the one on the, for the right hand side, I just pounded it through once everything was out of the way. Get it all apart and then you can clean it up. You know, you can work on your throw out bearing and clean it up and clean the rust off all this stuff so it's easy to work. I'll end up taking a wire wheel, run it in here, smoothing that up, probably put some emery in there and really make it nice and smooth and make it work really well. So that's some of the things I did yesterday. Also went underneath and I pulled, a, pulled the oil pump out of that engine yesterday. You can see right here, it's pretty grungy, so I'm going to have to go through, tear it all apart, clean it up, get it to working right. I don't want any issues with my oil pump. That's, you know, that's the heart of the engine, so you might as well make it nice. And then I went ahead and pulled out this oil rod that runs down inside and squirts oil onto the, onto the rod, uh, on your connecting rod. So I'm going to end up cleaning it out really well. And may open these holes up a little bit bigger, get a little bit more oil flow. Don't have to be much, but every little bit will help. You know, these things don't oil too much, so they don't have any oil pressure really. So the more you can get moving around, the better off you're going to be. <clears throat> also yesterday I took the head, I had the head off, so I uh, started working on it. So I took a straight edge to it, I cleaned it up. And I took a straight edge to it and made sure it wasn't warped or anything and it looked really nice. I've got a big machine of straight edge that I use to check these things with. And then I cleaned it up and checked for cracks and blew out everything, got all as much of the rust out of the inside of it as you can, as I, as I could get. I pulled the valves out and uh, cleaned them up and they're in great shape. I was really surprised. The valves, the valve seats are in really good shape and the valve guides are in great shape. So I guess the head, some had been worked on not too terribly long before they parked this tractor. So instead of, uh, you know, going and putting new valve guides and, you know, valve seats and all that stuff in it, I just lapped the valves and they seemed to work pretty good. And I, uh, I just lap them the old school way with a, one of these little guys. And I got two different grits of valve lapping or grinding compound. I've got some old school stuff called Allstate, and it's got the coarse on this side and the fine on this side. So on the exhaust, it seems like I always have to start with the coarse because they're a little bit more pitted, so they get a little more heat. And I work through the coarse, and I get them right, and then I do the entire all the rest of them with fine, and it normally works pretty well. So the way I do the valves is I've got a you know my valve spring compressor, and it's it's an old one, but it works really well. So you just snap this on. You have to adjust it to fit the fit the keepers. But to get it on, then you can push it in here and just and then you can take your keepers off, you know, and take your valves out. And then to put the valves in, you just do the opposite. So there's that. Get that out of there. So there's the valves. Look pretty good. I'm not going to be worrying about those at all. I think they're they work really well. So I think they'll be just fine. Like I said, I think somebody went through this head not too terribly long before. They parked this old tractor. So I put the bottom keeper on and then I I give it a little slack and I let it tighten up so the valve guide valve spring compressor actually holds it into place. And there you go. And then I just give her a tap. And it looks pretty good. I clean the head up with uh I just use the uh, 
wire wheel on a variable speed angle grinder. It works pretty well. Then I take a this and I get in here where the spark plugs go and then I chase the threads for the spark plugs again and you know I just try to make it make it nice. It's I think it's gonna be fine. Um, you know I don't have to do anything with it right now. I don't have any gaskets or anything for it, but I think uh, I don't think I'll need to get it the head shaved. You know, get, it all depends on what the block looks like when I get to working on it. I'll take the machinist square to that block too and make sure it looks nice and flat. And I don't have any spots where I get light underneath it. So you put the square on it, and then you shine a light. If you can see the light under the square between the square and the block, then you need to get you know get your block shaped or something. So so today. I'm going to continue working on the head. I'll go through these, tear these rockers down. And it's all pretty self-explanatory. You don't really need to do it this way, but this is the way I like to do things to keep them in order. You know, that way I know that this push rod and this rocker were on, you know, number one cylinder. Same with this, so I'm not mixing and matching. I don't think it matters, but that's just the way I like to do it. So I'm going to tear into this and clean all this up and make it nice again and see if I need new bushings because you can get new bushings for the rockers and see if my shafts are worn. I don't think they're going to be, but hard to say. Then I'll get into this Heisler manifold and clean it up. You see I've got a little bit of a rust problem up here. I don't know if I want to grind this out and put a new piece of pipe or if it'll just clear the hood, I'll probably just cut it straight and leave it alone. Once these are done, <clears throat> then I will uh, clean the valve cover, get it all re ready to go, and then I'll be done with the top end of the engine. So then that leaves me to probably come over here, and I noticed the drain plug pipe is busted off on the bottom of the radiator. <laughs> is it this one? No, this one's still there, so it's awful loose. I have to look at that, see what I can figure out. I think it's just loose. But I may not have to pull this radiator, but I am going to need to take the front end off of this because I do have a, I'm going to pull the engine, that's why I pulled the oil pump. The oil pump hangs down lower, so I'll take my gantry, pull the engine, pop these four bolts out, pick it up, and turn it 90 degrees and set it back on the frame. That way it's about the right height for me to work on. I don't have to bend over. And then I will see if I can get every one of these studs out work on the head at the top of the block make sure it's nice the cylinders look really good the pistons from what i can see look really good um, the rings actually hold liquid i will probably well i will put new rings in it i'm already down this far and i'll go ahead and pull the cam out and pull the front of the engine off pull out all these push rod tubes get all these guys out clean them up, clean the lifters up, and then I'll probably pull the pistons out of it, clean them up, get it all ready, put new rings in it, button it up. But so far that's what I've got going on. It's been a pretty busy couple of days, so I'm two days into it, working at my own pace, not really killing it, but I'm getting a lot, making a lot of headway. So what I'd like to do is get everything on my workbench all cleaned up and squared away. And that way all this stuff is clean and ready to go back on before I start tearing off the front of this engine. That way I can take the things off this engine and stick them over here in little subgroups and clean each one of those groups up and then jerk the engine, pull the pistons and get after it. So, thanks for watching.